welcome to the Medical Menemist Podcast, your source for memory techniques and accelerated learning in higher education. Now, here's your host, Chase DeMarco. So welcome back to part four of the miniseries for Read This Before Medical School, our new book release. Well, now I guess it's not so new. It's been out for a little bit now, um, came out in October. And yeah, this is going to be the summation of the last section. The last section is very unique. It's not like the other sections where we covered a lot of study skills and organizational skills, test-taking skills, advanced accelerated learning, memory training. This last section is really going to help us monitor what's been going on through the other sections. So I wanted to start with asking you something. Do you know that most medical students go into medical school without a plan of attack? And that's exactly what we're trying to avoid here. By giving you the knowledge and the skills and the training you need before medical school or early in your academic career, you can avoid this pitfall. I want to thank a lot of people for subscribing and sharing. The show has seen a huge boost in downloads recently. And I'd also really like to shout out to Dr. Yifan Zhao from Osmosis and Dr. Charles Cochran of Life of a Med Student for their great reviews of the book. You can find these on the back cover of the book. In the previous episode, in part three, we dealt a lot with accelerated learning techniques, namely speed reading, mnemonics techniques, those kinds of things, which we cover a lot in the show. So if you didn't see that one, didn't listen to that one, go back and check it out if you'd like to know more about that section of the book. In this episode, we're really going to cover a variety of beneficial journaling techniques that will help you gain control over your studies, your mood, and your health. And I know a lot of people hear journaling techniques and they probably tune out most recognize just the normal standard definition of journaling where you go home at night and write out your thoughts in your private journal and you hide in your nightstand or under your bed. Well, that is one type of journaling, but there are many types. So here are some of the ways that it can help. We all know that way too much theory without enough practice and experimentation can really be detrimental to our progress, to mastering a technique or improving our skills in that technique. That was a problem that I had in medical school, and I still have with a lot of the memory training that I work with nowadays. This is why we emphasize the use of journaling throughout this book. I know we haven't mentioned it as many times in the miniseries, but if you read the book, you will see we mention it in every section. And journaling has many evidence-based health benefits, including stress reduction, improved memory, decreased depression or severity of depression. It's also a great way to track your scholastic progress and your skills training throughout these training sessions that you might implement. So though we normally think of journaling just as a recount of our day's activities and moods and feelings, any type of consistent record keeping might be considered journaling. We use it to monitor pretests given throughout the book, tracking smart goals, monitoring new habit successes, and even for recording our meditations and spiritual and physical health. There are some specific tools and evidence-based tools that you can use for these, one of which is the experience sampling method, which we explain in greater detail in the book and give examples. And you can also find some detailed copies of this online. There are also specific journaling types and techniques that affect happiness, and this is generally known as a gratitude journal. And there are a lot of different techniques that can be used for this. You can find tons of information at your local library. If you have a subscription to Hoopla or something like that, lots of audiobooks on it. And templates are even available through the American Psychological Association, as well as the University of Berkeley's Greater Good Science Center. There is significant recent evidence and positive psychology research regarding implementing these techniques and the potential benefits that they could hold for you. Of course, we suggest journaling your study and self-testing sessions. And these don't need to be extravagant. They don't need to take up a lot of time because students are always concerned with utilizing their time to the greatest advantage for them but they can be a great way to self-monitor your moods and thoughts over topics and over time. Maybe you like one topic one day and not the next, or a few weeks later. Was there a change in you? Was there a change in the material itself or the way it was being taught? Are you doing better on tests now than before or worse? You can also write in some of the tools and graphs from the book, like Covey's Matrix, which you can also find in our free PDF. Speed reading and memory training, ideas, pitfalls, and general mentor guidance that you might receive from others are also great things to add to your journaling section. You can have a memory or accelerated learning section within your journal. Just divide up different sections for each of these topics. And lastly, in part four, we give some concrete examples to study techniques that help you on your way. 
There are some tips on flashcard creation and what makes a strong or a weak flashcard. There are space repetition schedule examples, such as the 11311 method, which we described in a previous episode, called Common Retrieval Practice Mistakes. We also wrap up this last section of the book with some common mistakes to avoid, how to avoid them, and where to turn for more advice and training. Obviously, there are many resources out there, and we have many of these listed in our appendix of the book for you to check out. More charts, more information, more links. We have over 300 citations in this book, so any of the topics that have been discussed in these four parts of the book, you can go out and get more information for yourself if you want to. You can also get our brief summation of it in our Essentials of Read This Before Medical School, which you can download for free at freemeded.org slash medstudent. But before you go, I do want to mention a few more things. One of these is the exponential type of growth that we've been seeing. Maybe exponential is not the correct term, but massive growth we've been seeing both in the podcast downloads here and in the Facebook group. So I want to thank you for being an active part of that and for sharing it with your friends. And I hope you continue to do so with any friends, family, colleagues. But one thing with the Medical Nemesis Mastermind group on Facebook is I still would like to see more interaction. I would like people to post their ideas, their thoughts, their questions, and help each other answer questions for each other. Of course, if you don't feel comfortable with that, you can send a message directly to me through themedicalanemonist at gmail.com. But it would be great to form a community where everyone helps each other, where we can develop ideas and get ideas from each other for visual mnemonics, for training sessions, for any kind of study skills that gain so much insight from each other and all of our unique experiences and unique academic and educational environments. And if you haven't checked out yet, we still do have a new show, the One Minute Preceptor Podcast. So I'd highly recommend you go over and check that out real quick. It's a great way to prepare for your clinical education and get some advice and maybe some concepts of how clinical work is in different specialties. And lastly, for this book, we actually have a giveaway that has started and will be continuing for the next couple of weeks. And we're going to give away a couple of free versions of the book, a couple of paperbacks for those that want to participate. You can do this very easily by going to book.freemeded.org slash giveaway. And through this, you can earn free raffle tickets and do daily activities to win more raffle tickets. And at the end of the time, the contest software will automatically pick three winners that'll get a free version of the book. Now you might be thinking, oh, I never win those things. I'm not even going to bother. But actually, there is a good chance, as of the stats right now, that you might win. Remember, medical students are very niche, and those that listen to podcasts are an even smaller group, and those that listen to this particular podcast are even smaller, and those that are actually listening to this podcast episode in the amount of time that the giveaway is going to be going on is much, much smaller. So even with the growth we've been seeing, you still have a good chance. However, if you don't feel comfortable with the giveaway, Don't worry, we're actually going to be doing a holiday sale in the next couple of weeks, and probably for the rest of, at least through December, where the book will be significantly reduced. So if you'd like to just purchase a copy, you can help out our Amazon stats as well. We greatly appreciate it. If you do, please remember to go leave a review if you like the book. So please go to book.freemeded.org slash giveaway and share, like, and follow the other requirements to earn your free raffle tickets and get your chance at winning a free version, a free copy of Read This Before Medical School. I hope you've enjoyed this brief mini-series, and we'll be following this up with some really great guests in the upcoming episodes. Have a great holiday season. We hope you enjoyed this episode. For links to connect to us, email us, or for previous episodes, please see the show notes. We'd also love to hear from you. So please send an email or join us on the Medical Nemesis Mastermind Facebook group. Any ideas, tips, tricks, people that you'd like to hear interviewed, we'd love to hear it. Any advice to make the show better and more enjoyable would be greatly appreciated.